Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, David Lepofsky. I'm co-chair of the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee, L-E-P-O-F-S-K-Y. Uh, beside me is Patty Bregman, who's counsel with ARCH, uh, the Advocacy Resource Center for the Handicapped, which is legal counsel to the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee. Three and a half years ago to the day, Mike Harris made a unique, unprecedented election promise to the million and a half Ontarians with disabilities. He promised a new law would be introduced and passed in his term of office, his first term of office, to achieve a barrier-free Ontario for people with disabilities. That law would be called the Ontarians with Disabilities Act. He also promised in that unique letter written three and a half years ago to the day, that he would work together with the coalition that I have the privilege of serving, the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee, to develop that law. Our coalition represents individuals, both those with disabilities and those without, and at least 85 of the major disability organizations from across Ontario. We involve people who have disabilities and people who will have disabilities sometime in their life. In other words, we really involve everyone. Three and a half years later, yesterday, Premier Harris betrayed a million and a half Ontarians with disabilities. He betrayed all of us. He introduced a bill into the legislature yesterday which bears the name the Ontarians with Disabilities Act, but which is not worthy of that name. This law is a fraud. It's a sham. It's a hoax. If Premier Harris wanted to do less for people with disabilities, he could not have found a better way than in the short three-page bill introduced yesterday. This is probably one of the shortest bills in history, and it's so short because it says nothing and it does nothing. People with disabilities face barriers right across Ontario in all aspects of life, in trying to get a job, trying to get an apartment, trying to get an education, or just trying to get on a bus. The government recognized that last summer when it launched its consultation to precede this legislation, and it heard from people with disabilities right across Ontario that that indeed is the, fa uh, is the life that they face and the life all Ontarians will face since virtually everyone experiences a disability in their life. This bill was supposed to tackle this problem. What does it do? It does nothing. The vast majority of barriers, the vast majority of barriers that we face are not even addressed by this bill. It doesn't address barriers in education, in housing, in municipal transportation, in getting into a restaurant, in getting into a taxi cab. It doesn't address the vast majority of barriers we face. Of the very narrow range of barriers it does claim to address, that is to say, the barriers that uh, are in the Ontario government itself, it does not require a single barrier to be removed ever. How much less could you do for people with disabilities in a three-page bill? All it says is that ministries should develop plans to list barriers and say what they think they would do about them but it doesn't require them to ever implement those plans. It provides no enforcement. It doesn't require those plans to be released to the public. It doesn't require the government to talk to a soul when they prepare those plans. It provides no penalties, no penalties, for failure to comply with its pathetic minimal requirements. But if that was bad enough, one would think there was no worse that it could get. But the bill is even worse than that. Not only does it provide for no method of enforcement, it explicitly forbids the courts of the land from enforcing this law. This is a bill which is designed to do nothing and which seeks to make sure that the courts uh, can't get in the way, 
from doing nothing. As a person myself who is blind, I must say that we are not distracted by smoke and mirrors. They don't work on us. They don't work on any people with disabilities. One and a half million Ontarians with disabilities and the public who cares deeply about their needs and concerns and who will experience disabilities in their lives are not going to stand for this fraud. The Premier has broken his promise to enact the Ontarians with Disabilities Act if this is what he is offering. The Premier also has broken his promise to work together with our coalition to develop the Ontarians with Disabilities Act. Since from the very day Premier Harris took office, up until now, up until the moment that bill was introduced, the Premier has steadfastly, consistently, and explicitly refused to even meet with us. How more aggressively could he break, the, break that promise and look at the results? The irony is that last summer, this government released a discussion paper setting out its ideas for the Ontarians with Disabilities Act and seeking input from the public, especially from the disability community. The government ignored everything they heard from people with disabilities. The government ignored everything they heard from the broader public sector, from the labor community, from social and community groups, and so on. The government didn't listen. But that would be bad enough if that was all that happened. In fact, that would be unacceptable if that was all that happened. But the government, the government has done even worse. It has given us a bill that is even weaker, even more feeble, even more unacceptable than the paltry offerings in that discussion paper. That discussion paper proclaimed as government policy that everyone has a role in the prevention and removal of barriers facing people with disabilities. This bill proclaims in its effect that no one has a role in preventing and removing barriers. What are we going to do? This word has gotten out quickly across the disability community even though the government that promised to work with us gave us no prior notice that the bill would be introduced yesterday. Nevertheless, the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee has been in touch with the vast majority of its regional groups in the 15 parts of this province where we are already organized and with as many others as we can get in touch with uh, overnight. Represented in this room are a number of the major organizational members of the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee. Just to mention a few, the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, the Blue Review Macmillan Center, the uh, March of Dimes. Um, I know the Canadian Paraplegic Association uh, wanted to be represented here but was uh, unable to attend, the Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Association of Ontario. Just, just to name a few here to show their solidarity. Our position in response to this bill is that this bill must be withdrawn now. This is not a bill. This is not something you can work with. You cannot breathe life into a corpse. You cannot fix something that is fatally flawed. We call on the Premier immediately to withdraw this bill, to withdraw his relentless policy of refusing to even meet with us, the group he promised to work with. We call on the Premier to meet with us now. We call on the pr Premier to work with us to immediately develop a, repl a replacement bill, a bill that we can look at, that we can work with, that we can improve upon, and that Ontarians can be proud of. I must tell you that having spoken with people from one end of this province to the other last night about this bill, till all hours of the night, the response I've gotten is not just, we don't want it, it could be better. The response is that Premier Harris has slapped 
us in the face. He has punched us in the stomach. Premier Harris has hurt these people. They feel betrayed, they feel angry, they feel wounded, they feel cheated, and they have every right to do so. A law is something which imposes obligations to make society change. This law vigorously does nothing. It is not a law, it is a sham. What is our strategy? Well, we have a two-part strategy that we are announcing today. The first is that we will do what we can to pressure this government from one end of the province to the other on the dying days of its mandate with an election looming to withdraw this bill, to introduce a good bill, and to put it through the legislative process and to pass it, and to work together with us, as the Premier promised, to develop and pass it before his first term is, is completed. That's the first part of our strategy, and that strategy begins today. We have regional events taking place today in St. Catharines, Thursday in Ottawa and, and uh, London, and Friday in Guelph, and that is just the beginning. The second component of our strategy is to turn our attention to the next election. While we are nonpartisan, we do not represent any political party, we do not subscribe to nor oppose any political party, we have one agenda item only, and that is to win a strong and effective Ontarians with Disabilities Act. If we do not obtain that, and if the promise is broken in this term of office, then we will turn to the next election and get the disability vote out to elect members of any party that are promised, are prepared to make and keep real promises to us. In the past, politicians have ignored or discounted the disability vote. A million and a half Ontarians, however, will not be discounted or ignored ever again. So it's a two-part strategy. The first part is to uh, do what we can to get a good law passed now, and that's got to begin with the immediate withdrawal of this bill. And the second part strategy is that if we are unsuccessful, or in case we are unsuccessful, to begin immediately our plans to make the disability vote make a difference in the next election. May I be clear that while my message is a strong one and our emotion of betrayal and hurt is a profound one, and no matter how many times we are ignored and slapped in the face by this Premier, we nevertheless extend our hand in a genuine commitment to be prepared to work together with this government to develop a meaningful, strong, and effective Ontarians with Disabilities Act. We have a blueprint. It is a blueprint set out in 11 principles. It is one which the disability community embraced last summer from one end of this province uh, to the other. It is one which uh, was presented to the legislature by way of a resolution by Liberal MPP Dwight Duncan on the 29th of October of this year, and it is one which was unanimously passed by all parties of this legislature less than a month ago. It is a good blueprint. It is one which achieves and acquires and is supported by a strong bipartisan consensus. It should be the blueprint for the Ontarians with Disabilities Act. This bill violates each and every component of that resolution. People with disabilities frankly deserve better. This law does not deserve the name Ontarians with Disabilities Act. This law is more accurately described the do nothing for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. Thank you very much and we'll be quite happy to take questions. Anybody has any? Any questions? No questions. You seem to sum it up pretty Said it all. <laughs> well then, we've got members here <laughs> from... I have one question. Oh, Can sure, you just go, go over maybe some of those 11 um, principles, just very, very briefly? Certainly. What, what is it then that you want? How are we going to break bring these barriers down? The core ingredients are these. The law 
should require the barriers that people with disabilities face in all walks of life, access to jobs and housing and services and facilities, should be identified and removed, and that new ones should be prevented before they happen. The law should require this to happen. It should provide an orderly, helpful structure for this to happen and reasonable timelines for this to happen. We realize that some barriers could come down now and others will take a longer time. Some can be done, gotten rid of cheaply or at no expense. Others will cost more and will take longer. We are practical. We'd like a detailed law that provides the mechanisms that requires this to happen but allows it to happen in an orderly way that explains to government and the private sector alike with clarity what needs to be done and which solicits and acquires their input before its specific uh, details are elaborated upon in regulations so that all will feel that they can share in it, have a say in it, that it's practical, that it's not inappropriate. So we, we see that it's got to apply to all barriers, not just those in government. It's got to be mandatory, not voluntary. It's got to actually set out t reasonable timelines for action. This bill has no timelines. It's got to make a difference. And uh, put simply, those are the, the core uh, ingredients uh, that we see should be in the legislation that the disability community united around and that this legislature unanimously approved. Let me also be clear because there's been a disinformation campaign mounted by the government in response to that resolution that we are not seeking, have never sought, are not asking for job quotas. When that resolution was passed within two hours of the government's 25 members including the Premier's own parliamentary assistant Marilyn Mashinsky voting for it, the Minister of Citizenship's own parliamentary assistant Derwin Shea voting for it, Minister Isabel Bassett who introduced this bill Within two hours of that resolution being passed, she came out and said, this includes job hiring quotas. She knows it doesn't. She has received a flood of letters reiterating it doesn't. <coughs> and no matter how many times she states falsely that it doesn't, or that, that, that uh, we're claiming job quotas, we are not, we never have, it has nothing to do with this. It's an effort, I might add, uh, this job quota is... Um, strategy to somehow inflame public opinion against one and a half million Ontarians with disabilities. We just want to get the barriers out of our way so we can compete uh, along with everybody else on a fair footing of equality and that's what this is all about. I'd like to note that present here are members from both opposition parties. Both opposition parties have committed uh, publicly to support legislation that uh, would uh, would uh, comply with the resolution and perhaps what we might do is just ask if each party would like to send one person up to make a, uh, a, a brief statement uh, if they'd like right now. Start with a little. No, no, don't want, no, don't need to. We All right. Appreciate the, uh, the offer, but we're okay. here if folks want to talk to us. That's fine. I don't want to yeah. take a Absolutely. <laughs> we realize you've got a busy, uh, we realize you've got a busy news day. If you have any other uh, uh, questions, I, I, I should note that the government has, along with the bill, introduced a package of companion initiatives. We don't propose to respond to all of them today, but in brief response, we should note that firstly, none of them are a substitute for the bill we were promised. Many of them look very much like things that have either been promised or are in fact being done, or things that were being done until this government took them away. Uh, one of them, a, uh, an $800,000 uh, incentive fund uh, involves a drop in the bucket which is a tiny percentage of what this government is spending in our tax dollars to advertise right before an election its political message. I suspect that our taxpayers would rather see those millions of dollars that are being spent by the government on its political ads spent on making society more open for people with disabilities. Any other questions? Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you.